Today I'm bringing you some really high-end DIY decor that you're not going to want to miss. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel if you guys are new. My name's Liz. For today's video, I have some DIYs that I think look so high-end. If you want to make your own home decor and make it look like you purchased it from a high-end store, then you're not going to want to miss today's video where I teach you how to make your very own high-end spring decor. So without further ado, let's jump in. So I actually got this sign, I believe, last summer, maybe, <laughs> from Dollar General. It says hello somewhere on the front, which is super cute. And then it's just blank on the back. I got it for $3. And I thought doing the front would be really cute, but then I had an idea for the back. So I'm going to flip this around and we are going to do a DIY on the back. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint this with my sea glass chalk paint from Dixie Belle. I love this color. It's like the perfect minty type green, which is one of my all time favorite colors. So I give this one good coat on the front and then I painted it all around the sides. Next, I'm going to take the Chocotour Surface Wax. I am going to be using a Chocotour Transfer with this. So I'm going to put the Surface Wax down. I do this because I feel like it helps with bleeding. Whenever you are using your transfer on a porous surface like wood, um, I like to lay this down just like I said because it helps me with bleeding. This is the transfer I'm going to be using today. I believe that it's called the Woven Stripes but I'll have it listed down below just in case that isn't correct. And I'm just going to lay this right on top of my wood round and I am just going to go in with my chalk paste in bright white. A lot of times with bigger transfers like this I like to work in sections. I will lay the paste down and then pull the transfer up. This is just to make sure that the paste doesn't dry to the transfer instead of to the surface. So you can do it like that if you're a little bit slower at chalking like I am. I'm going to grab one of these wooden planks. These come in a six pack from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in white. I just give the front and the sides a coat of that paint and then I am going to go through and give it a distressing to do that, I'm using my Waverly Wax and Antique. I'm going around all four sides and then just kind of slightly making it overhang on the sides so that you can see it from the front, if that makes any sense. But just coating the sides and then dragging it a little bit on the front. I'm also going to distress my wood round itself. I'm taking a brush and then the same Waverly Wax and Antique and I'm just going along all the sides and letting the wax get on the front just a tad, not too much, but I wanted all the sides to look distressed. I'm also going to coat the plank in the surface wax as well because we are going to use a transfer on that one too. And for that transfer, I'm using the welcome one that just came out during the springtime. I'm going to use this small welcome right here and I am going to lay that right down on top of my wooden plank. Try to get it as even as I possibly can and then I'm going over that with the velvet chalk paste just using my squeegee. Pulling that up to reveal the word welcome. You want to make sure that you wash your transfers after you use them so that you can use them over and over and over. I'm going to grab this greenery that I got from Michaels. It was $3.99, but I always buy my greenery or florals from them on sale. I cut this down to have three pieces on each side, and then I'm going to attach these together just using some twine. I just kind of bundled them up in my hands and then used that twine and just wrapped it around and around and around until they were all nice and secured together. I'm going to use some hot glue to attach this to the top of my wooden round. So I actually found this ribbon at Walmart in their Easter section and I just cut a couple pieces off. One I'm gonna use for the loop. I just hot glue the ends of one piece together and then the other piece is going to be the tails. I just 
bunch these all up on top of each other and use some twine to tie them both together. And I just take that twine and wrap it around the middle over and over and over again and then just tie a double knot in the back. I'm going to hot glue this right on top of our greenery. I also did dovetail the ends to make them a bit more even since one tail ended up way longer than the other. Lastly, I will glue my wooden plank down to my sign. I just kind of centered it over to the right using a mixture of hot glue and some wood super glue that came from the Dollar Tree. To finish it off, I'm just going to add a hanger by using some white rope that came from the Dollar Tree. And that's it for this one. I think this turned out so cute. I love this for spring and it can also be used pretty much all year round if you wanted to. I just think it looks super adorable. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. For this DIY, you are going to need a couple pieces of scrap wood. This backing right here is a quarter inch of some birch wood, and it is a little bit over 19 inches by a little over 13 inches. I'm going to take my paint colors in Waverly Sandstone and Dixie Belle Sea Glass. I'm going to start by painting the backing with the Dixie Belle Sea Glass. While the paint is still wet, I'm going to add a little bit of that sandstone in there, and I just kind of brush these all together, mix them together. I wanted that sandstone to look like streaks throughout the paint, just a very light, you know, dimensional look to it. And I did do this in sections so that I could make sure that my sea glass paint was still wet while I added the sandstone in. And I also didn't worry about going all the way to the edges since I will be putting a frame on top of this. Next, you are going to take some one by twos. You're going to cut them down. Two of them will be a little over 13 inches, the same width of your backing. And then two of them will be a little over 18 inches. And these are going to be the sides of your frame. So I am going to start by staining them with my Dixie Belle Gel Voodoo Stain. I think this one's called Into the Storm. I'm not totally positive on that. I'll list it in the description box below, but I enjoy these stains because they are water-based. They have zero smell to them, which means I can use them in my craft room without having to open a window or anything like that or do it outside. I am very sensitive to smell, so I get headaches really easily. So these are perfect when you are crafting indoors. I wanted to give my backing a shiplap look. So what I'm gonna do is take this level that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just drew some lines all the way down using a pencil. And I'm going to smudge the pencil lines just by using a paper towel. I just go down each line and it smudges them out, makes them look a little bit more realistic and gives a bit more dimension to it in my opinion. After I've gone ahead and smudged all of my faux shiplap lines. I'm going to take more of that sandstone color on a chip brush and I'm just going to lightly distress this. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension and detail to the backing so I just went over the entire thing just with the chip brush. I get these from the Dollar Tree and I just dip my brush in brush the majority of the paint off on a paper towel and then just lightly go over my backing. I am going to wax the entire surface because I am going to be using a chalk couture transfer with this. So I just take it on a paper towel and just buff some wax over the entire backing. I'm going to be using this cotton tail market transfer from Chocotour. Now this one is not available anymore. It sold out pretty quickly actually, but I do have an extra one along with the bunny cutout that I'm going to be selling on my live sale over on my VIP page on Facebook. If you want to be a part of that and try to snag it, make sure that you ask to join my VIP page. I'll leave the link down below and that sale should be happening this coming Sunday. So if you don't want to miss out on it, make 
make sure that you go join my VIP Facebook group. Again, linked down below. But I just laid this out on top of my backing. I'm going to go ahead and cover up spots that I don't want to get chalk paste on. I don't want the bunny to be pasted on because I'm going to be using the bunny cut out for the bunny. So I just took some washi tape and I'm just covering up the spots that I don't want any chalk paste to get onto. And I just went over the rest of all the words and the florals with my chalk paste in bright white. And again, I kind of did this in sections where I added the paste, lifted the transfer up, dried the paste with my heat gun, and then laid the transfer back down. After I did that, I just moved on to the rest of the sections on the transfer. Now, you don't have to do it this way. I just prefer to do it because I'm a bit slow when it comes to chalking. I went ahead and washed my transfer and let it dry. Once it was all dry, I'm gonna take my bunny cutout from Chakator. Again, like I said, they don't have these anymore on the website, but I do have a few that will be a part of the sale. And I'm going to lay that bunny part right on top of the bunny cutout. And I did use my velvet black chalk paste for this. I did cover up the nose with a little bit of washi tape because I did want to make the bunny nose pink. And I just added all my chalk paste and then lifted it back up to reveal the cute little bunny on the backing and again wash your transfer so that you can use it again. For the bunny nose I went in with my Dixie Belle chalk paint in T Rose and I also filled in his ears using that same color. Now I went and used some hot glue for this. I would recommend not doing that because you'll see in a minute it does not stick at all. So what I did was use a combination of E6000 plus some wood glue super glue. I laid it down on top of my sign, added some heavy objects to make it all nice and stuck down and I left it like that overnight so that the bunny was nice and secure to the sign. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the frame to my sign. Now, I'm just going to show you how it all goes together, but I am going to take this out to the garage and nail the backing to the frame just so that everything is nice and secure. Some of my frame pieces were a bit bowed, and I wanted to make sure that they were going to be nice and secure to the frame, and glue just wasn't going to do that. So if your pieces are nice and secure, you can just use some glue, but for me, I had to use a nail gun to secure it. But this is how it turned out and I think it looks so great. I think that this looks like a high-end piece that I could have gone out and purchased for a lot more money than what I made it with and I just think it looks absolutely gorgeous. For this DIY, I'm taking another piece of scrap wood. This piece is a little over 16 and a half inches by a little over 11 inches. And I believe that this is just part of a one by 12 that I picked up from Lowe's. I'm gonna start by painting the entire thing with my Waverly chalk paint in white. I just gave the whole thing one good coat. I wanted to add some vertical shiplap lines to this, so I just took this Dollar Tree ruler slash leveler and a pencil, and I just used this to draw my lines. I smudged them out a bit using a paper towel. I just go down each line. If there's any kind of mess ups or maybe the lines don't look too straight afterwards, I did take a little bit of white paint and just kind of fix them up a bit. And then I took my Waverly Wax and Antique and I went around all the edges to give it a little bit more of a distressed finish. I'm gonna be using a Chocotour transfer on this one. So I do take my surface wax to help with bleeding. So I just buffed that into the entire sign. I'm gonna use the words, oh hello, from this transfer that I believe launched this spring. So it should still be available on their website. And I just take this portion off and I'm going to center this at the top. I'm not going to transfer on the there. I do add a piece of washi tape to make sure that I don't get any on there. I'm just going to use the words, oh hello, 
I'm going to use my March color of the month, which is called Academia, which will only be available for the month of March, but I will also have a couple of these in my Facebook live sale. It's this really pretty blue green that I think is gorgeous, and I'm just going to use that for the Oh Hello. Next, I'm going to tie a bow. I believe I got this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. And since it has a front and back, I want to kind of twist the ribbon so that all of the front is showing and none of the back is showing. So I just kind of flip everything around. And then I am going to just pull on those loops to make my bow. I grabbed a push pin that I had in my stash and I'm going to push this into the wood. I have this galvanized bucket that I believe came from Walmart and it has a little hole in the top that I am going to use to hang that bucket on. I took that bow and I hot glued it right to the push pin. I also glued the sides down to the backing so that the ribbon tails would stay in place and they had a little lift to them towards the top. I put a piece of floral foam down inside that galvanized bucket and I grabbed a bunch of florals that I had. I want to say all of these came from Michael's and I just kind of cut them apart, stuck them into the floral foam. I had these really pretty blue flowers that I felt would match the Oh Hello really well. And then I also had some of these white flowers as well. And I just think that they look really adorable all inside of there. And this is how this sign turned out. I think it's so cute. Perfect for spring and then you could also remove the flowers and put different flowers in if you wanted to but I think this turned out really cute. For this DIY, we are going to take a beaded wreath that we got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take some florals. These came in a bunch from Walmart, I want to say for about $5. And I just cut this all apart. I'm taking some floral wire and I'm going to start attaching these all together. So I took these two pieces, wired their ends together, and then I wired it to the wreath itself. I don't personally enjoy using hot glue when it comes to my wreaths because I feel like it just makes a mess and you can see the hot glue really well. So I personally enjoy using the floral wire better. That's just my personal preference. You can do it however you want, but that is just what I like doing and I feel like everything stays really well. And so I just start attaching everything to my wreath. I took these bigger flowers and I used their stems to help wrap around the wreath itself. And then I wired them on as well to keep them additionally secure to my beaded wreath. Now to go with our wreath, I'm going to take this sign right here, this herringbone sign. If you guys didn't know, I am going to launch some home decor on my website. This sign is included with that launch on April 1st. You're not gonna wanna miss it. This sign will be available for purchase and there are so many different things you can do with it. Do what I'm doing, add a wreath to it, staple it on the back so that you can reuse it at a later date if you wanna switch up a little bit. You could do a chocotor transfer on here, so many different things. So I'm gonna show you how I attach the wreath to the sign. I'm gonna set my wreath down on top of my sign. I have this ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby. I cut just enough out to wrap around the back of my sign and then as well I'm going to take two loops and tie them together to make a really simple bow. I'm going to flip the ribbon and the sign over on its back. I just took a staple gun and stapled this to the back of my sign and then I will glue the bow down to my ribbon at the top 
And that's all you got to do for this one. Really easy, super cute. You can take the wreath off since we just stapled the backing. There's not going to be a hot glue mess and you can reuse the sign if you want or add a different wreath or whatever your heart's desire to do with the sign. But I think this turned out really adorable. For this DIY, I grabbed this wooden bunny cutout from Michaels. It was $7.99, but I believe that it was 40% off. I'm also going to grab some of my scrapbook paper that you can grab from my website, moredecalanddecor.com. I'm just going to trace the bunny out and cut the paper out just using some scissors. I'm going to use a good old glue stick to adhere my paper to my bunny. I just run that all along the front, and I personally find that it sticks really well, but you can use whatever kind of adhesive that you'd like. I'm going to stick that on there and then any overhang I'll cut off using my X-Acto knife. Now I found a bunch of ribbons and some mesh fabric and I'm going to make a little headband for our bunny right around the ears. I'm gonna start by hot gluing the ribbons to the bunny and I just kind of layered these all on top of each other. I wanna say the majority of this ribbon came from Hobby Lobby and I just glue these right on top. Now I'm grabbing this mesh fabric that I have from the Dollar Tree. This is actually the Halloween mesh that you can get during Halloween time. And I just cut a little piece off. I'm tying it around right on top and tying this into a double knot on the side. And then I also have these cute little paper flowers that came from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to take one of those, hot glue it right on top of that knot. And that is it for this DIY. Super simple, super cute. And I think it looks adorable with the rest of my spring decor. And that's it for today's video. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comments down below. Keep your eye out for an announcement on my live that I'm going to be doing at the end of the month. I'm gonna be going over the reconstruction of our subscription box and the new tiered system to it, along with sharing more of the home decor items that I am going to have listed on our website for sale. And then if you're looking for some spring and Easter crafts, make sure to click my link down below for my craft kits for spring and Easter. There are so many fun ones, so many cute ones that I absolutely love. So if you're looking for some of those, I'll have that link down below. And I think that's about it. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.